Hello everybody, Adam here. I am a professionally trained audio engineer as well as metal guitarist and today I'm going to be continuing my way through the Willow album by Reflections. This is a fourth track I'm about to check out and it's called Isolation. These are all sounding sonically amazing right now. Their singles were all amazing. Uh, the last two tracks I checked out, one and three, Synthetics and Psychosis, were all very good, very well mixed. So let's go ahead and jump into isolation here and see what I think. Let's go. Okay, a song that doesn't start off with a huge low tom hit. Okay, so we got some really ambient effects going on here. Oh, so I was right. Oh. Drums are all all mono. Mono drums in the center. Really cool intro effect here. This, this is going to widen out here in a second and destroy me. Oh, oh my gosh. Great production choice. Good job. Those harmonics! My god! The subtle, like, ride cymbal hits are so good and they're so clear. I'm so surprised you can hear them so well with the rest of the mix being so loud and heavy. They kept the ambient effect in, in the left ear and right ear the, that entire time, by the way. So where's this one going to next? Wow, the pick hit on their electric guitar is so prominent. Lots of distortion being used. That is awesome. Vocal center, left ear, right ear, guitars, left ear, right ear, center. Awesome ambient part. So the ambient part is in the left ear, right ear. That was really cool. Man, the drummer is so good. Just every member of this band is amazing. They've had that dissonant ambient effect going on the entire freaking song. That's why this song sounds so like you're on, on the edge of your seat the whole time. It's still going. They haven't stopped that ambient effect all song, I don't think. It's like one note just... His vocals are so clear. I can't usually hear it when, when the vocalist's like mouth is opening up and down, but I can with these guys. Very raw, very visceral. The, the vocals, even though they're really well produced, they're so, they're so visceral and so in your face. It's a really interesting way to mix. That's, that's China, man. Sounds great. Really prominent China work there. Let's jump into this. I did notice in, in the song, though, and this is a really cool trick. You don't have to keep your drums panned exactly the same way all the time. At the beginning of the song, he did a very, very cool thing that I, that I want to talk about with the drumming. The drums were 100% mono at the beginning. So when you were listening to the drums at the very beginning for the intro, you'll notice, like especially if you go back and listen, there is nothing going on in your left ear and right ear. You're hearing it all, it all in the middle. And then I said, this song is about to open up. And that's how I knew that like 
as soon as that drum set, that mono effect stopped, that made this huge emphasis when the whole freaking band came in. And the way you do that is, and this is definitely the takeaway uh, from the song for me personally. So if you are an audio engineer, or if you're doing like your own productions at home, or if you like have a client uh, that, that wants their, their song to come in with big emphasis, you want you use one or two things, or maybe use both of them. I've used both of these before together. Use telephone filters, keep it mono, so keep it like dead center, combine the two. So it sounds like what, what he did for here is he took all the drums, and, and remember, the drums are all over your headphones, they're all over this space here, they're all over everything. But he took everything and just centralized it. He also added mono reverb and mono delay. So what that means is you can still hear the reverb, you can still hear the delay, but it's only in the center. You're not hearing it in the left ear or right ear. And then when that drum part in the middle stopped, that's when that dissonant part started playing. And then it was basically like opening a door to your stereo image. You open up that door and everything just like boom hits you at the same time. And that was so heavily emphasized because of that super mono intro that we got. That was very creative. Very, very creative. I want to talk about a production thing and like a songwriting thing that I have noticed on every single one of their songs so far. Either the album is following a story and like the songs are maybe supposed to be combined together in one listen through, or the band has a really hard time ending songs. I will, I will keep, bear in mind, I will bear in mind that I am listening to the song, to these songs just one at a time and then doing my analysis afterwards. Maybe the album is meant to be listened through from start to finish with no pauses or breaks. Uh, because I always feel like their songs end awkwardly. The, their songs don't follow a song structure. It's just heavy, heavy, heavy. S screaming, screaming, heavy, screaming. Besides for a few other songs where I know they have clean vocals. Like, uh, I, I felt like on their Samsara song, that song was very, very well written because of the clean vocals. I, I felt like the song had room to breathe and it was also heavy as well. Don't get me wrong, I love heavy vocals. I love bands that just do heavy vocals. But in, on this song, it stayed on the exact same plane the entire time. My emotional status in, throughout the entire song was very much like very on edge, I guess you can say. A big reason for that is because they had just this either dissonant note or two dissonant intervals in like the center of the song or hard left and hard right on a keyboard or, or a MIDI patch or maybe like one of their um, electric guitar players was maybe doing some like really dissonant thing with some long delay and long reverb because that was happening the entire song. I, I don't think I've ever heard a song before where they just keep dissonance in there for the sake of dissonance. Something I would have liked for, for, uh, for this song is for just 30 seconds, 30, 30 seconds where you can keep your dissonance. Your dissonance is fine, but add some melodic dissonance. On the last song that, that, that I checked out, they did that. They had a really cool, clean electric guitar part that helped like break up the monotony of the heavy, heavy, heavy that they do for most of their songs. It's a good songwriting decision and even, even if you don't know it, and even if you don't like melody, you will like it when they do it because it emphasizes and makes the next part of the song more heavy. When your entire song is heavy, it's all staying on one plane like this. You need some melody to kind of pull the energy down and then to bring it back up again. Because even if you bring the energy back up to the same level it was, it's gonna sound like a dramatic increase in energy. 
maybe just like a little bit more dynamics from the actual songwriting itself would it would have been a, a good production choice here but sonically sonically this sounded amazing it's really hard for me not to repeat myself because a lot of what i have to say is very similar to the to the last song again just incredibly creative use of panning uh panning like electric guitar left ear right ear center vocals left ear right ear center the drum is panned in a very specific way to where it really like impacts you with especially with, with like the low floor, floor tom being on the right side and the low tom being like just like right up here next to it uh maybe like 100 percent right and maybe like 85 or 90 percent uh for, for for the low floor tom right i really really like how he's not afraid to pan something and sometimes you need to pan in order to have your mix not be lopsided so let's say there's a, there's an electric guitar part going on in the right ear, but only the right ear, but you want something to like keep it beat. You can put that hi-hat in, in the left ear for like, you know, eight bars or something or four bars. And then, and then when everything comes in, you just move the hi-hat back to where it normally goes. And then, after, then you have everything else come in at the same time as it regularly would. Incredibly creative use of panning, I think, the, the drum set, the mono drum set was 100% the takeaway of this video. I continue, continue to be impressed with, with this guy's audio engineering skills. I'm just, what can you say? This sounds amazing. This sounds amazing. Alrighty, so that is it for me. Thank you for watching. If you're liking my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button, give me a like, throw me a comment, do all that fun stuff. I will continue to do my Willow full album review. So it's, it's especially important if you're liking the content to hit that bell and hit that subscribe button because you'll be able to see the rest of this uh, content as I put it out. If you are really enjoying the content, I do have a Patreon page. It's in the top link of my description below. I do have some cool super subscriber perks and I will be updating some of those on a few future videos so you can get more uh, interesting content and you can get some of my cool downloadable stuff from my Patreon page in the future. So again, thank you for watching the video and I'll see you guys in my next Reflections Willow full album review. Bye bye.